Hey everyone, welcome back to Prime News. Uh, yeah, later today we announced the winners for, well, Super Mario 3D World. I almost said All-Stars again there. Uh, and Bowser's Fury, so stay tuned for that. We will have a live stream later today. Uh, so that's exciting. Uh, the winners have already been selected this morning. You cannot enter to win right now. Uh, we are going to have a new giveaway starting today. We're actually going to be giving away a $100 eShop gift card. If you would like a chance to win that, head down to the description uh, to enter. All right. Now, let's get into ooh, the news today. We have five big pieces of news, and we're starting with CD Projekt Red. Now, what happened on the day uh, I did get a Prime News episode out this week because of technical difficulties was I was going to talk about how CD Projekt Red got hacked. Uh, so for those who aren't sure on the story, essentially somebody hacked into CG Project Red and got all the source code for Gwent, uh, The Witcher 3, and uh, Cyberpunk 2077. Also, they happened to get a bunch of private employee interactions and emails and exchanges and HR stuff. And uh, they got their hands on a whole bunch of stuff and they sent a ransom letter to CG Project Red, which they responded to on Twitter. And such as saying, hey, we've already contacted the authorities. We are not going to respond to these threats. We're not going to you know, give in and, and you know, essentially doing what I think most people would, would like to see in this situation is, hey, look, we're not just going to give them what they want. Uh, which I think was a bunch of money or something. I can't remember. So, uh, what happens now is they have decided, look, if CD Projekt Red's not going to give us what, what they want, we're just going to get what we want from other nefarious places. So, they have taken to the internet and one, proved they actually have this data by leaking the source code for Gwent. So, you know, proof is in the pudding. Okay, they claim they have it, but uh, do they really? Well, here's the source code for Gwent. Done. You know, probably the least thing that people will care about. They are actually auctioning off the source code for The Witcher 3 and Cyberpunk 2077. Now, this is according to VX Underground, which is a well-known place uh, where you can kind of get source code for different malware and, and, and other things out there. They're actually a really legit kind of an underground thing that, you know, us casual users really know about. But if you're in the know, you know that this is a legit group. Uh, well, they have said that on a certain forum, and I have gone to that forum to confirm this is happening, they're auctioning off The Witcher 3 and Cyberpunk 2077 source code, and the auctioning price starts at $1 million USD. $1 million. And you could just do a buy it now, you know, the eBay buy it now link, uh, for $7 million. Now, What's interesting in this source code, because you might be like, who cares about the Witcher 3 source code? Who cares about Cyberpunk 2077 source code? The games are already out. Like, yeah, we'll discover some interesting things that maybe never released publicly, but what, what does it matter? Who needs the source code? Well, the Witcher 3 source code actually includes the next-gen update that has yet to be released. It's also possible that Cyberpunk 2077 also has bits and pieces of the next gen update, although it doesn't sound like the full update is included in those files. Now, who would pay for that instead of waiting for the official release? I have no idea, uh, but it's out there on the black market right now uh, for anyone that I guess wants to spend the cash to have source code for games that were never supposed to be out there. Now, it doesn't mention that they are auctioning off the private interactions, and it's unsure if the people who hacked into their servers are looking to do anything with this private information. Uh, maybe they're gonna withhold it, because it seems like right now, the whole point of what they're doing is to make money. Uh, and I don't know if there's a lot of money in those private interactions, uh, and they kind of look like more of a sleazeball if they were selling off private interactions. But anyways, that's our first story, and uh, kind of sucks. I mean, yeah, some people could say CD Projekt Red maybe deserves it, but uh, at the same point, I don't know that regardless of the lies and, and, and the backlash over Cyberpunk 2077 that this is like a proper response. So no one's really sure how they gained access. There's like some rumors that it was like a former employee or, or maybe a current employee that allowed it to happen. Uh, but those are just like unverified stuff thrown out to the wind. So who really knows? Let's move on to our next story. Uh, so for our next story, I want to look at the notes because this is, I didn't expect this to happen. Nintendo is doing a concierge service for Nintendo Switch owners, in particular new Nintendo Switch owners in North America only. This, I assume, is being targeted towards maybe 
older people like my parents or grandparents or so that might not be as technologically savvy and aware based on the services they're offering here because they're actually offering a 30 minute live video session. So we're not talking about some pre-recorded guide. We're talking about an actual Nintendo employee getting on a video call with grandma, with my heck with me if I needed help uh, for 30 minute session on a various amount of topics. It's about three hours worth of total video sessions that you can have that you can have if you need help with everything. Uh, and you have to schedule these obviously ahead of time. You can't just call me like, hey, I need help. Uh, it's gotta be pre it's gotta be scheduled. And here's the the, the 30 minutes uh, sessions. Each session they have one is for customization, so customizing your switch. Kind of weird since there's not really any customer that guys you know, I could think you could do of. I guess maybe like changing uh, the order of the games. I guess is something you can you can customize. Uh, games, aka getting started. So probably introduction to the eShop. I'm assuming or um, suggestions on, on types of games or for their tasting games or whatever. Uh, games. This is a, a separate session. What to play next? So you already own a couple games, Animal Crossing, whatever. What should I be looking into next? Kind of interesting because those, like getting started and what to play next feels like things they could add to the eShop, like Netflix does, but anyways, a uh, 30 minute session for that. Next up, Nintendo account. Obviously, talking about Nintendo accounts and how all the uh, stuff works and all the benefits. Uh, there's also then another session for Nintendo Switch 101. Obviously, this is just the basics of using the platform. And then the final one is uh, for security and privacy so i think that's all interesting um i think it's it, it's good someone like me and probably you guys that are watching videos like this are not going to need this service but i'm glad it exists uh for those out there that might uh it's kind of a nice gesture i don't know how widely used that service will be but it's good that it exists for the few people out there that are going to need some of that help that don't have a son or a grandchild or someone else that can help them out and explain things uh, so cool this next story shouldn't be a shocker to anybody because we already knew a movie was coming but guess what the Sonic the Hedgehog movie you know that live action movie with Jim Carrey and all it's getting a sequel of course we've known it was getting a sequel for a while they announced that but now we know when it's coming and we know what it's called but we don't have a new trailer so there's no trailer here they did release like a little clip on Twitter uh, that just revealed the title which is Sonic the Hedgehog to two, two it's actually releasing on april 8th 2022 of course like every movie release it's kind of tentative it could end up changing but still uh it's really exciting to see another sonic movie in the mix uh we now have an idea of when to expect it next year uh and honestly i thought the first one was really really good so give me more sonic goodness man our next story is actually about blizzcon yes blizzcon is happening this year starting on february 19th uh, it's going to be online only, and it begins at 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Uh, and they're actually going to be starting off the show talking about games that are already in the works. Uh, so you can expect, you know, uh, games and up, you know, uh, games and updates on games that are already in the works, already released. So you could probably expect to hear about Diablo 4 and Overwatch 2, two games that have trailers and now it's talked about in the past. Uh, now we know they're not coming this year, but still, they can still talk about it and get us ready for when they might be coming. And then obviously World of Warcraft, you know, the Shadowlands stuff came out. What's next for that? What's the next content? Not the next, like, you know, I, I don't expect to hear about, you know, another expansion pack right now. And that's like maybe next year, but to hear about, you know, more raids and whatever content for that game as well. Uh, and obviously, there's some speculated stuff out there, rumored, like a Diablo 2 remake. I don't know how legit those rumors are, but... I mean, it's out there. Maybe we can get lucky and hear about that. Uh, the rest of the day, which is about three hours, is going to be just a bunch of really deep dive features that actually are spanning across six different streaming channels. Uh, so I'm, I'm assuming channels like related to individual IPs and streaming stuff related to that. Uh, that's day one. And then there's going to be a second day, which is basically just a giant Q&A session. Um, and all this is gonna be happening on Twitch and or, and or YouTube. They're gonna have streams on both. Uh, so that I think that's really really cool. Uh, I'm not gonna live stream the entirety of the event. Maybe we'll stream the very beginning uh, where it has the initial announcements. Uh, but we'll see. I'm not positive that that's even gonna be something I decide to do. We'll cover it, of course, right here on Prime News. You will get all the news, all the big news from it. But uh, 
yeah, that just needed to let you know what is happening for any of you Blizzard fans out there. Our last story is about PlayStation 5 scalpers. Um, so Forbes put out an article where they talked to, I don't know, dozens, hundreds of scalpers, including some running major scalping organizations that create the bots and all that. Uh, and apparently PlayStation 5 scalpers are tired of the reputation they have as they don't think they're actually the villain. They think they're the hero. That's right, folks. Scalpers think they are heroes. They are just helping out the everyday man. Um, <laughs> I have a hard time wrapping my mind around like how you come to that logical conclusion to justify what's happening, justify bots. But anyways, uh, we have a lot of quotes here. Uh, so the, the quotes in general come from a whole bunch of different people. The, this first set of quotes actually comes from Jordan, who, who uh, co-founded a place called The Lab. Uh, so it says, there seems to be a lot of bad press on this incredibly valuable industry, and I do not feel that it is justified. All we are acting is as a middleman for limited quantity items, said Jordan, who co-founded The Lab, a private group that advises paying users on how, how to scalp, also known as a cook group. Essentially, every business resells their products. Tesco, for example, buys milk from farmers for 26 pence or so per liter and sells it for upwards of 70 pence per liter. No one ever seems to complain to the extent that they are currently doing towards ourselves. The backlash from angry gamers has led to death threats. By the way, don't. No. Death threats are never okay, even in situations like this. They're just no. Um, but he said he reported those to the police. Uh, this comes from a, di a different person. Uh, says, we do a lot for charity as well. I myself, or collectively as a group, donate to charity almost monthly uh, at this point. Most notably, over the past month, we donated a large portion of membership fees to a food bank local to me. So they're talking about a hacking group selling the bot software uh, in order to buy, you know, having a subscription fee and using that money for food banks. That's great. That's dandy. However, when the person asks for details, you know, what food bank are you are you donating to? Why are you being so coy about the donation? Uh, the details of the food bank to confirm the donation, uh, but the guy, in this case named Regan, wouldn't provide that information. So you claim you're donating to a food bank, but you won't prove you're donating. Like, you can't try to be seen as a good guy, but then fail to provide the evidence you claim exists that you are a good guy. Hey guys, I donated, you know, all these subscription member fees to a food bank. But I won't tell you what food bank, so you can confirm I actually donated. I'm just gonna tell you I did. Guys, guess what? I'm Nathaniel Robert from the Nintendo Prime. I am a multi-billionaire, except the fact that I donated my billions and billions of dollars to leave less than a thousand dollars in my bank to, I don't know, build a cathedral for, I don't know, people who have a lisp. I, I, you see what kind of bullshit it is? Like, you can't claim you did something for charity that's easily verifiable and something you should be proud to verify and then not provide the information to verify. Sounds like bullshit to me. Now, the whole thing seems bullshit to me because I don't know how you could be a scalper and feel like you're the hero in the story because you're enabling the everyday man like me to, oh, hey, look, I want a PlayStation 5. My store sold out. Yeah, guess what? I can go on eBay and buy it. When I could buy it in person or online easier if you did not exist. If you did not gain unfair advantages. And they even talked about in this article, because uh, again, I'm not going to quote the entire article, about some of the unfair advantages that they have, how they've broken down, how to order things at the server level. So even when the website is not working or it's crashing for everyone through a web browser, it's not crashing for them because they are right on the server making the purchase anyways. They have a literal unfair advantage compared to consumers and they think it's good. They think it's positive. They think it's no different than the fact that there are you know, people buying milk and then reselling milk at a grocery store. But here's the difference. Let me explain the difference. There is such thing as the provider and the distributor, all right? So as an example, let's look at video games since we're in this space. 
Bayonetta 3 is being made by Platinum Games, right? They're providing this game to a producing company. That producing company being Nintendo. Nintendo is going to take that game, publish it, and release it out. Now, is it? do they need to charge $60 a pop to recoup the cost of this game for the development? No. Do they want to charge $60 a pop in order to make a profit off of it? Absolutely. So think about it like this. You are a farmer in this case, because he mentioned the farming example, and you milk cows, right? You're really great at milking cows, at keeping them happy, at uh, producing a whole lot of milk. But just because you're an expert at that doesn't mean you're an expert at distribution. How do you get your milk from your farm to the people? And if you produce a ton of milk, how do you do it efficiently across maybe an entire state? Well, you can let another company come in, purchase that milk from you, and then sell it at a premium to everyone else. This is 10 times different than what scalpers are doing. Scalpers are buying something that's already sold at a premium and they're charging you more to make it, I guess, easy to buy anytime you want. Except the difference in this case is I can't go buy that milk for 26 pence. You know, let's just say it was 26 cents here in the United States. I can't go to the local farm, hand them 26 cents and get a jug of milk. I can't. I can't do that. The difference here is I can go online and buy a PlayStation 5 for $3.99, $4.99, directly out of my bank, hand the retailer money and get myself a product if the website stops crashing and there's enough stock. You can't do that. When you're someone who produces milk, you need the distributor to get them out to the people. So yeah, the distributor is gonna charge a premium for that to the people so they too make huge profits. Everyone profits in this case. You know who doesn't profit in the case of scalping? The people that have to pay more than they would have to pay if you would just stop scalping the damn system. I'm sorry, guys. When I go on eBay, last time I was on eBay, this was like two days ago because I'm I'm, I'm, I'm getting a PlayStation 5 for the guy giveaway that I just said last month because the guy chose PlayStation 5. I, and I see over 30,000 listings for PlayStation 5s. 30,000, that is 30,000 legit consumers that could have bought it at MSRP. Let me tell you that will lower the demand of legit consumers, enabling other legit consumers to be more likely to get the future shipments. Instead, demand is only being artificially inflated because the scalpers are scooping it all up. Do you not see the problem here? Scalping is not the same as being a distributor. You're not a distributor. You're not selling something on eBay does not make you a distributor. God. I, you're not Robin Hood. You're not robbing from the rich. You're robbing from the everyday people. That's why you have a bad reputation because you're doing something shitty. It's legal. No one's debating the legality of it because it has to be legal to resell the stuff you own. The problem is you're turning it into a business and you're doing it in ways that the common people can't do. And then you're selling services and selling programs on top of that to enable more profitability for everyone, including the people making the program and then the people doing the actual scalping. It's bullshit. Scalpers suck. They're ruining Happy Meals. They've ruined the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X and S because that's getting scalped too. They've ruined Switches. The only reason right now that you know some of you guys might even be able to get some of those red Mario Switches is because retailers like already have them in stock. I was at Walmart yesterday and I tried to tried to buy one um, and they won't sell it to you because it's not Friday yet. As soon as Friday hits, good luck finding one. I, it's bullshit. It's bullshit. It's all bullshit. Scalpers, just go away, all right? All right, folks, I'm Tanner Robojets from Tanner Prime. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.